Hello lovely people, I have an absolutely ginormous book haul for us all this week. So I posted a book haul fairly recently because that was the books I got gifted for my birthday. As well as being given books for my birthday, I do have a tendency to get slightly overexcited in like the end of June, July, early August period. So I tend to buy more books in that time because I'm just like, birthday time, and I get a bit... I, I have, this is, this is me waffling an excuse. I have no excuse. I feel no remorse. I've got a rather large book haul to go through today. I'm going to try and be concise. This can roughly be split into queer books, middle grade books, and assorted extras. I think I might start with my queer books, then my assorted extras, and bring it all home with some middle grade. That's going to be my plan. So I'm going to start off with the four sort of queer themed books I've got. The first two of these come courtesy of the Queer Book Box, which I've mentioned a couple of times. It's a really nice um, book subscription box, everything sourced from Gaze the Word, which is an independent bookshop in London. You get to support independent bookshop, you get to read queer lit, it's great. I'm really enjoying, because like the unifying theme is queer, you get to explore like a lot of um, genres and stuff like this. So um, I have <laughs> got two months to talk about in this haul because I forgot to do it in my last one. So um, I think this was June's book was um, we Were Always Here, a queer words anthology with a bunch of contributors, edited by Brian Vance and Michael Lee Richardson. This is a collection of current Scottish LGBTI plus writing and a showcase of queer talent. So um, my understanding is that this is a mix of, I think it's a mix of fiction and non-fiction. I could be wrong there, it might just be queer short stories. Um, but suffice to say, I have been really crying out for, I'd love recommendations if anyone has them, for um, queer books that focus on uh, UK voices and history. Because I feel like a lot of the history books I've read, there's a lot that focus on like Stonewall, um, AIDS crisis like New York, um, Homington, which is going to be talked about in a book chat at some point, I don't know when that's going live. Um, was sort of like a global European and extended viewpoint thing but essentially um, I feel like my gaps are looking at like UK voices so in that vein to look at some contemporary Scottish LGBTI plus writers I'm quite excited I'm hoping this is going um, to be a really good jumping off point and I can go forward and I can get to know some of these people's other writings but um, this is exciting the uh, July Queer Book Box book was Ali Smith, Girl Meets Boy, which is a book that has been on my radar for a while. <laughs> Queer Book Box's hit rate is very good for um, half of them are, have so far been books I've wanted to read that are on my to read list that I haven't owned, and then the other half of them are books that I've never heard of but that are exciting. So this is um, a sort of a, a remix of Ovid's Metamorphoses, which I love. Um, of its metamorphoses, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. of its metamorphoses is uh, like a Roman um, text. They're all about <laughs> metamorphoses, so like nymphs, gods, or stuff like that, um, morphing into others. Which obviously, as a start point, has real potential for reworking in regards to gender and stuff. So this talks about it's about girls and boys, girls and girls, love and transformation, a story of puns and doubles, reversals and revelations, funny and fresh, poetic and political, here is a tale of change for the modern world. So I've heard a lot of good things about this. I don't think I've read any Ali Smith, despite her being a big name in the book world, so I'm excited to dip into this one soon. Um, the next two are books that I just bought of my own accord. Um, Queer Intentions, A Personal Journey Through LGBTQ Plus Culture by Amelia Abraham. Uh, who talked about this? Oh, Leanne over at Leanne Rose posted about this on our Instagram or in a haul recently or something, and it really sounded really interesting to me, so I went out and bought it. Um, Amelia Abraham is doing like a, a collection of essays that are like her own personal exploration through queer culture, um, and that just sounded like a really interesting. I like these learning about queer history, but also like personal people's people's personal journeys and stuff like that, like that melding is something that really interests me. So, and I really like the yellow, <laughs> she says wearing yellow, hey. So 
So this is one I'm excited to dive into and dip into and see what it's like. And then finally is one that I've heard so many good things about. Um, this is Trans, a memoir by Juliet Jacks. Um, in so many videos I've watched on YouTube, which are um, books about trans book wrecks, stuff like that, this is usually always mentioned. I know it's a, a, a big name in that sort of like genre if you're looking to explore it. Um, so I spotted it in a second-hand bookshop and I absolutely swooped on it because I was like, haha, my moment. So again, very interesting. I like um, exploring people's personal journeys and lives and stuff, you know, learning history as a whole is very interesting but then also focusing on and having deeper understanding of individual different journeys and stuff so excited for this one okay i'm going to move into my assorted randomness section of the hall um starting off with two catherine valenti books so space opera by catherine and valenti um i pre-ordered the paperback of this i prefer reading paperbacks to hardbacks so i've been I've been waiting for the paperback to be available in the UK and I'm really excited it's arrived. Catherine M. Valenti is one of my favourite writers. I've been particularly hyped for this one. This is essentially like Eurovision in space and I'm so thrilled. It's like, um, like aliens, the greater galactic world. Um, like in essentially in this country Eurovision came about because at the end of World War II, um, Europe as a slightly extended thing, was like, we need to work on our unity, let's all sing in competitions together! Like, that's a very basic, but like, that's the gist of it. And this is a very similar thing. Great Galactic War, let's do a music competition to try and heal those wounds. When humanity is able to get to the stars, they uh, discover this thing, and they're like, okay. Decibel Jones and the Absolute Zeros, a washed-up glam rock band, have been chosen to represent humanity on the greatest stage in the galaxy. The fate of Earth lies in their ability to rock. I'm so excited. It sounds like it's going to be really fun. I can't wait. Um, the other one, I didn't actually buy this one myself. Um, my mum accidentally ordered two copies of Apocrypha, which is Catherine Valenti's poetry collection, so she gave me the spare copy. I've read, um, I've read a Catherine Valenti poetry collection before which I can't remember the, I think it was called Oracles. It was, it was like about oracles, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but I liked it. Um, so this sounds exciting again. Um, the types of themes that are talked about on the back are themes which don't surprise me, being familiar with Catherine Valenti's work, specifically like um, Emperors, Beasts, Witches, Wicked Stepmothers and Greek Heroes, Told Seductively and Wickedly in Poem and Prose, Jocelyn and Vice for Supremacy. So like, these sorts of themes, I feel like I have a, an understanding of the things that Catherine Valenti is drawn to because they're things that I also find interesting, so um, that's going to be interesting. After that is some steampunk, Soulless by Gail Carriger. I watched a steampunk, well, steampunk? <laughs> I watched a steampunk recommendations video and I'm forgetting who put it together now but someone did. I'll try and find it, and if I am able to find it, I'll link it in the description below in case anyone else is interested, because steampunk is a genre that I find really interesting. I think it has a lot of cool visuals associated with it, that sort of thing. I haven't read that much steampunk, but I have read some. Um, most of the steampunk I've read has been more like middle grade YA. This is a sci-fi sort of detective book. Our main character, um, <laughs> just the back of this is just quite fun. First, she has no soul. Secondly, she's a spinster whose father is both Italian and dead. Third, she was rudely attacked by a vampire, breaking all standards of social etiquette. So there's vampires, there's werewolves. It's an alternate reality, London, Victorian time. It seems like it's going to be quite funny. I'm essentially quite excited to... I'm hoping this is going to be in the similar vein to stuff like the Invisible Library series, which is like steampunky at the edges, it's got humour, it's got exciting mysteries, and there's going to be a greater arcing plotline and like an individual nemesis maybe. That's my prediction. Suffice to say, like a rollicksome funny steampunky time with vampires and werewolves, I'm here for it. Moving on from that, I am thrilled that I got this particular edition of this next book. Um, so I picked up Skin by Ilka Tampka. I really specifically wanted this edition, the hardcover with this gorgeous gold foil on it, and then when you open it up, you've got this lovely end papers which have the blurb on them. And then again, if I go forward, blah 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 blah, you have a really nice map. Love a good map. 
Um, I'm thrilled about this. This is essentially like a fantasy book situated in Iron Age Britain, and I love Iron Age Britain. I find it very interesting. Um, this is about... Um, what is your name? I, I think it's Ilea. So Ilea, um Like, the people in this world have... Like, for the people of Kaerkad, skin is their totem, their greeting, their identity. Our main character does not have skin, which means that she's an outsider in the village, there's all this stuff that's denied to her, blah, blah, blah. Um, and in this particular world, it's, it's um, AD 43, so, like, the Romans are becoming an issue. I love history. We know this. Do a lot of history stuff in my job. Um, and Romans are an interesting time. This, this, um conflict between Britons and Romans is interesting. I really like it. I find it very fascinating. Um, so I'm really excited to read some historical fiction that's like Iron Age Britain themed. Super hyped. Gorgeous edition. This was, I picked this up on the recommendation of Jean at Jean's Bookish Thoughts because she has a similar like sort of historical focus that I like. There's a lot of like historically inspired like fantasy stuff that she reads which I always like add to my TBR and I'm like this sounds so amazing. And that's one of them. Okay. The fun, I've got two more books from this little segment and then we're on to the middle grade. So, um, these are both non-fiction, starting with The Romanovs by Simon Seabag Montefiore. Um, I've watched some TV shows that he's presented, which were always fun, BBC Four type things, I think. This is one of those non-fiction books which I've seen a lot about on Booktube. I've heard, I think, if I remember correctly, it's Olive at the Book Olive said this was good. She reads a lot of Russian history, so I really hope I've remembered that she said it was good, rather than remembering that she said it was bad. Because <laughs> now I'm questioning that. But I have heard. Oh, and also um, Hannah, the dyslexic reader, pretty sure she liked this as well. So there's been a lot of buzz. It's been on my radar for a while. I'm not... I am passingly familiar with the Romanov. I could give you the basics. Couldn't really give you much more in-depth detail about them. Hopefully after reading this chunker, that will change. I think it's a lovely cover colour. And I like reading history. We know this. We know this. I like filling the gaps of history that I don't know anything about. So whenever I build up to reading this, and I think it might be a, a little bit before I do because I've got some other non-fiction going on at the moment. Um, but essentially I'm excited to learn and discover a bit more like Russian history because my Russian history is not very strong. Um, and then after that <laughs> is um, Epic Continent Adventures in the Great Stories of Europe by Nicholas Jubber. Uh, this is actually a non-corrected proof copy, which means it shouldn't have been sold in the second-hand bookshop I was in, but it was, and I picked it up. Because um, this just sounds so fascinating. It's all about the stories that made Europe, so it's all about the epics. If I, if I read you a little bit from the blurb, it says, The great European epics were all inspired by moments of seismic change. And it talks about, so like, for example, we're looking at the Odyssey, we're lo looking at... Um, the Nibling Saga, we're looking at Song of Roland, we're looking at Kosovo Saga Cycle, yeah, words, can't do them today, we're looking at Beowulf, we're looking at what these epics say, what these epics mean to culture, how these epics have had a hand in shaping culture, how these epics became staples of these cultures and stuff, so like, I love epic. I love my oral storytelling traditions. I like exploring epic, that sort of thing. I like thinking about why epic has lasted so long and that sort of thing. So this was too good to walk away from. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really excited to dip into this one soon. I really, really do want to. Moving on to the middle grade section, I'm going to start with the only one of these books that I actually bought. The rest of these are largely uncorrected proof copies, some of them are finalised copies, but um, I work for a children's magazine publisher, we get sent a lot of books. Uh, if you want to take them home you can, I often take them home because no one else seems to and I'm just like, I will read all the middle grade books, yes please, because it's bringing a lot of light to my life. Um, so the one I actually bought was, again, a proof copy. <laughs> Um, this is Pages & Co, Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. Anna James does have a YouTube channel, she's really great. Um, so I, this has been on my radar before, and when I saw it I swooped and I bought it. Essentially, um, since her mother's disappearance, Tilly has found solace in stories at her grandparents' bookshop. When beloved characters Anne of Green Gables and Alice from Wonderland appear in the shop, Tilly discovers she can follow them into thrilling fictional worlds. There's like this mystery element of what happened to her mother. There is 
these elements of book characters coming and guiding her through books and stuff. I just think this sounds so lovely, really, really sweet, and I'm really excited to dive into it. Okay, we've got four more books and then we're done. Two of these books are dragon books, so I'm going to talk about them together. Um, first of all is The Secret Dragon by Ed Clark. Um, number one, what a gorgeous cover. I love this little bronze foil that like highlights everything. Um, this sounds so sweet. Um, Mary Jones is desperate to be a real scientist even though she's only 11. She finds a baby dragon, she starts to bring the baby dragon up, she loves the baby dragon, she's trying to keep it a secret, but obviously dragons are a little hard to keep secret. So I'm assuming shenanigans are going to ensue. Um, I've been really interested in dragon books recently because Jade at Jaded Reader did a dragon books recommendation video and it made me realise that I haven't read dragon books in ages and then immediately after watching that video I unintentionally read two dragon books and I was like, you know what, I really like dragons. Um, so when this one came in, no one else was looking like they were going to take it home so I was like, I will take the dragon book home with me. So I'm excited to dive into this one and get some dragon fix. Um, another book which has dragons in it, I'm reliably told, is is Max Kowalski Didn't Mean It by Susie Day. Um, all I know about this, this is a much sparser blurb going on, but essentially Max Kowalski Didn't Mean It is a bold, brilliant story about family friendship and what it really means to be a man. Oh, and there are dragons. So, hey. <laughs> I'm excited. I don't know a lot about this one. Um, I think it's about Max's relationship with his dad a little bit, and then somehow there's dragons involved. But um, Susie Day I've heard good things about, so again, another one that I'm going to dive into, see what it's like, hopefully I'm going to enjoy it. Um, penultimate book, we're finally getting there guys, is The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty. Um, this sounds in the similar vein of being like a really quirky and delightful middle grade book. So, um, Bronte Metalstone has been brought up in a very sensible way by her aunt Isabel and the butler. So when her absent parents are killed by pirates and she's sent on a whirlwind visit to her ten aunts, she takes it all in her stride. So um, this is like this adventure of um, someone who's been brought up very sensibly suddenly being thrown into a lot of very wild experiences and essentially just having to like stumble her way through it. So um, I'm quite excited to just sort of, I'm really enjoying middle grade at the moment and I've been, mostly courtesy of my work, I have been enjoying a lot of really good ones recently. So this sounds like something that is right up my street again and I'm excited to dive in. Finally, we're there guys. The final book I have is Frost Heart by Jamie Litchler and I'm so, I adore the cover of this. This is what the cover looks like with the dust jacket on. You can see there's a little ship, but then if you undo this dust jacket you see underneath the water what is underneath the water which is very sweet i just think whoever did the cover design for this which might be um the author because he is also an illustrator and has illustrated this book so maybe i'm wrong there maybe it's all him um in which case kudos jamie but um this is released october 31st 2019 um it's about a boy called ash um who waits for his missing missing parents um, when a brave rescue attempt reveals Ash has amazing magical powers, he's whisked, a, he's whisked aboard the Frost Heart, a sleigh packed full of daring explorers. They need his help, but can they help him find his family? And the back of this describes it as Nevermore meets Frozen with a dash of How to Train Your Dragon. Um, I am excited about this because one of my favourite stories growing up was The Snow Queen and the original one, not what Frozen is, <laughs> but the actual Snow Queen story where she goes on an adventure and all of that thing. I really loved that growing up. And this has real vibes of that to me. So I might save this one for like a wintry read a little bit, but um, as I say, I'm excited. I forgot to mention when these other books are out. So Secret Dragon is out now. Um, Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone is another October 2019 release. And um, this is a 5th of September 2019 release. So coming soon to a world near you. Can I read them before they're released? Hopefully we'll see. If I can, I might do like a little, um, maybe I'll read them all before they come out. I could do like a little summary three book review video or something. Let me know if you're interested, if you've managed to get this far into this video. Um, that's it. Oh, it was a bit of a mammoth haul. I need to stop buying books so much, but I just got really overexcited about the vague concept of a birthday. Um, I hope you're having a really lovely day. Have you read any of these? Would love to hear your thoughts in general. Do chat in the comments below. 
otherwise I will see you next week for something different.